Welcome to another episode of Love and Reality Podcast. I am your host, Ricky Valero. On today's episode, we are going to continue our trek through season six of The Circle. Uh, this has definitely been a more interesting season, to say the least. I've seen a lot of mixed emotions about the season. I would love to hear your thoughts on season six, whether it's the rider dies, whether it was Max the AI, whether it's the catfishes, whether it's introducing the new people. What did you guys think so far of this season? And of course, what do you think of the latest batch? This is the last batch before the finale where we crown the winner of season six. Um, lots of things unfold through episodes 9 through 12. But before we jump in, a few programming notes here for the Love and Reality podcast. If you so happen to miss this week's, uh, this past Monday, I dropped my interview with Cassie from The Circle. Uh, we had a great conversation. She gave us a little bit of insight about The Circle um, between um actually between finding out that season seven has already been filmed of The Circle and then kind of giving us some like, you know, ins and outs of how the process works and how she thought about her strategy and 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 what she thought about her gameplay. And we had a little fun during the interview as well. But uh, it's definitely a great interview. Great insight. Loved having Cassie on the podcast. She was she was really, really, really fun to have on here. And she was great on the show. Um, and you could see how much she was missed this week just by some of how uh, things unfold it. Um, and this week's episodes do get serious. Um, also, this week you will hear on uh, the next episode of the 11 Reality Podcast where I break down Vanderpump Villa episodes, uh, I think seven, is this week seven? Vanderpump Villa episode seven, the Fowley episode seven, and uh, much more. Um, that's going to be a lot of fun to talk about those shows. We're winding down on one of them. And then next week, my coverage begins of The GOAT. The GOAT is coming to Prime Video slash Freebie May 9th. Um, I had an opportunity to catch up with most of the cast of the show. So throughout the season, you'll be hearing interviews of me talking to the cast of The GOAT. Um, great conversations with that cast. I think a lot of people are going to really have a lot of fun with that show. It's very reminiscent of your House of Villains type-esque show competitions gameplay um it's 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 a lot of fun basically uh each episode somebody is crowned the goat uh, after they winning a competition and then of course they pick two teams after they pick their two teams they face off in another competition the losing team is uh up for elimination um and it's uh each game is based on a reality uh universe you know what i mean there's bravo games there's medical reality tv it's so much fun but without further ado let's go ahead and pick up right where we left off where we were seeing who if kyle and or paul was going to go home um obviously paul decides to leave while kyle chooses to stay but of course you know they eliminate it him slash her there Paul has been blocked from the show. Now, this is my question. This is a genuine question that I have here. What was the point of the ride or die if you were just going to do this? I don't understand. Like, I don't understand the implementation of the ride or die. Sure, you run the risk of both of them saying, hey, I want to stay, and then they're both eliminated, both want to be blocked. But then you 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 really guilt it, Paul into deciding to leave because Kyle was ranked higher on the food chain. You know what I'm saying? So like that, it, I don't know. The ride or die thing just, I don't know. Um, all right. So alert. It has been announced that one player has been blocked from the circle circle. They sacrificed themselves to save their ride or die. Um, the circle goes crazy to see Paul gone from the show. Uh, Paul gets to meet his ride or die. Of course, Kyle uh, realizes Paul is Caress, and Paul's reaction is his jaw is on the floor. Um, she introduces herself as Caress, told him to play she wanted to play as her brother. Chris breaks down that Lauren had flipped the script and says that he needs to look out for her. And then, of course, Kyle tells Caress about reigniting the bond with Olivia over their lost parents. So we just had some conversations here obviously our rider dies are left are autumn and lauren olivia miles qt jordan and of course kyle all uh 
Lung and Paul left a message uh, for the circle. Of course, it's revealed as caress. Everyone freaks out. She reveals that she did see her rider die and Crips dropped that she left a little bit of a wrap before she left. Um, we get into the circle chat. Some, you know, mixed bag of goods here. You know, this show is fun, but there's a lot of the downtime stuff is kind of boring. The conversations, you know, it's hard to figure out where this show could kind of improve when it comes to that type of stuff. But um, everyone kind of apologizes to Autumn in this moment. Autumn slid into uh, Lauren's DMs to talk about game playing and how she screwed up. These two go kind of back and forth, back and forth. Um, Miles and Jordan uh, talk. Miles thinks Jordan loves him, but he really doesn't. He's just trying to throw him under the bus. Uh, Miles figured out that QT is Jordan's ride or die. I love the way that he did that. Jordan kind of dropped that hint. Um, and I really feel like, not diving too much into the rest of the episode, but I really feel like this could have really up the ante of the gameplay had some of this stuff come to fruition if you allow the ride or die to last longer. QT and Olivia made an alliance. Um, Nadia are nice alert. Everyone will post two photos in the circle chat, one being the nicest one, one being the naughtiest one. They will vote for the nice, one will vote for the naughtiest one. Somebody will win, one or the other. Um, what do you win? Nothing. Um, sorry. Uh, but who won? Uh, Lauren posted a little saucy little photo of her um, in the bathroom with nothing just but like a bikini on. And she won naughtiest. And then, of course, Olivia won the nicest. Um, so, yeah, it was def definitely, um, I mean, not really surprising. Lauren posted a, posted a little sexy photo that, you know, caught the attention of everybody. But uh, no real, uh, you know, stakes at uh, play here. Um, Kyle slid into Olivia's DMs, trying to win her over for the game's sake. And then before he did so, he apologizes to the picture of his wife. And he does this maybe four or five times. And this, look, the way this entire scene goes down is hilarious. Because you have Kyle, a married man who is catfishing as a single man, swooning and wine and dining a... Olivia, who is catfish of a man. Oh, and what's even funnier, like a gay man, you know what I mean? So it's it's really funny to kind of watch this dynamic go on, on unfold here. But uh, these two get a little freaky with Olivia saying the water's hot. They both send a little bit of picture and their collage to each other. Um, it was just must worthy TV. And I love, 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 love seeing Kyle um, um, apologize at every turn at his wife, you know, at his wife, the picture of his wife. Um, <clears throat> alert players must rate each other only one influencer um, tonight but their ride or die will join them for to be a secret influencer um, we moved on to the next episode QT puts Miles in first instead of Jordan which was kind of funny um, but Autumn and Lauren put uh, one another in the top spot Jordan does the same with QT and then Miles puts Olivia but Olivia puts Kyle Autumn has Olivia being uh Autumn had a, Autumn had Olivia pinpointed as a catfish, like right out the gate. This is like, I mean, Autumn was a good game player. I just think that she didn't come on too strong. And I think when you come in this late of the game, you either have to do A, what Autumn did was just try to fit into the bunch, or B, what Jordan did for this entire batch was go crazy. Um, Autumn and Jordan make a pack. Um, she threw um, she threw Olivia, QT, and Miles under the bus, making Jordan happy since he does not like miles um game time we are um we are going there's the name of the game is an alert each question is a secret so one person in the show gets to ask another person a question but it is a secret now this great idea for execution um because the first question was a little bit of a softball miles to olivia miles really wanted to get it out there to show that olivia um had more of a personal vulnerable side so like ask something to real reveal nice about them Jordan even mocked this one, um, but says Olivia brought up um, being bullied as a child. Everyone kind of had a, an emotional moment over that. Lauren to Jordan, what do you feel? Who do you feel most threatened by? Uh, Jordan keeps Miles in his back pocket and says Lauren, and now she's completely confused because why would anybody be um, threatened by her? Now the, that one was probably one of the better you know answers, I guess, because it was just strategic. Kyle, who's your strongest alliance and why? Kyle didn't name names. I. 
Jordan asked Miles, how do you feel knowing you got the entire circle wrapped around your finger? <laughs> QT right away figured out that he thought she thought it was Jordan that asked this question. Miles said he didn't know where he was standing and uh, and felt insecure in his game play or where he was in the game. Um, but he thought it would have been either Kyle, Autumn, or Lauren who asked that question. Again, that was a good strategic answer by Miles. I'll say that. Kyle to Lauren, why has everyone been in alliance? You've been in alliance with Gone Home. And then that kind of, she spins it by saying what they have. Um, saying, you know, she just kind of spun it here. She says she's made good connections on the inside. Uh, QT to Autumn, Lauren, um, like Lauren needs her to turn it around big time. She asks who, uh, who does she feel least comfortable with and why? Doesn't really answer. Um, again, if you didn't, if you weren't going to answer the questions, then what was the point of this dumb game? Auto ask QT out of your current alliances, which would you not mind breaking to win 100K? Guess who didn't answer the question? <sighs> All right. Trade Swag was chat group together. Um, obviously, that's QT, Kyle, and Miles all chatting it up together. They talk about Autumn and Lauren's name being on the block. Kyle throws Lauren under the bus, saying that she can't be trusted. Uh, Kyle says Olivia is on their side. Lauren slides into Jordan's DMs to ask him about being a threat, and this is where she he, has, he runs the opportunity and throws Miles under the bus. Jordan does and uses this uh, to put her underneath her wing, saying that Miles was talking shit about Lauren behind her back, and then she falls for it and kind of throws ottoman as her ride or die she kind of knew the ride or die situation he's like let me do this we're gonna do this we're gonna do this yada 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 alert ratings are in this is my problem your fate is no longer tied to your ride or die what the fuck was the point think about this for a minute think about how much more of a game player you have to be if your ride or die is attached to you Think about it, okay? And you can't leave. If the, if you're ride or die, now this is this is how I would have handled the gameplay for the ride or die. You introduce the ride or die after that first batch. We get into the second batch, okay? You have your ride or die until the final four. Then maybe all systems go, right? Because then you have to have people that are playing the game in a way that's maybe uncharacteristic because they're trying to save somebody that the other people don't want saved. It's all about games, you know what I mean? And this is the part of the, sh the show where it's really fun, and then they rip it out from you. Just when you kind of get used to just seeing, all right, well, Max is an AI. Max is not being used by the producers. Let's see if Max can really win the circle. And then it was like, no, we're going to take Max away. It's like, oh, let's introduce the ride or die. Kyle gets, Kyle's gone because of Paul being on the bottom of the barrel, but maybe we don't want Kyle gone, so maybe Paul will sacrifice himself to save Kyle like, do we see what I'm talking about here? Do we have a little bit of a conspiracy? Because I feel like there's a little bit of conspiracy here. I mean, Kyle does have a lot of followers on social media here. You know what I mean? But the thing about it is, is what's the point of the ride or die? If you have to attach yourself to the ride or die, like QT, um, you know, QT being the ride or die with um, with Jordan is a whole different ball game. She has to play a whole different game because Jordan is her ride or die. So Jordan is in the bottom of the barrel with everybody. So if she has to protect Jordan through the towards the end of the show, this makes it that much more interesting. Like I don't understand the point of introducing things only for them not to matter, only for them to even more so not matter after this alert. Um, the ratings were in. Um, seventh place was Autumn. Sixth place was Jordan. Kyle dropped all the way down to fifth. Fourth was Lauren. Um, so obviously QT, Miles, or Olivia, and then uh, Miles, Olivia, and QT uh, are his third, second, and first. QT wins the top spot, means Jordan's sticking around. Uh, QT and Jordan meet. Now, this was probably one of the most interesting conversations that we've seen in the show so far because Jordan really thought in his head, which I have to say he might have been an idiot, or maybe he thought there was an opportunity here. He really thinks he can talk her into ditching Miles. She brings up Lauren. He says no. Jordan makes up a story about Miles, but she said um, it would be a bad look for taking him out. She wants to take someone that will put her uh, fading back into the background. She wants to eliminate somebody that's low risk, high reward. She fades back into it. Not, not everybody's mad at her for eliminating this person. QT says the only way to make it to the final is to take out Autumn. Um, and again, Jordan is trying his best here to just like straight argue with 
QT, and she's just not listening. And this is the thing that I really liked about Jordan. Jordan's trying to play a game. Jordan knows he's bottom of the barrel. Jordan knows that he's on his last ditch effort here. And he understands the aspect of the game where he has to try to um, do something to solidify his place in the game. But he pushes way too hard. Okay. And then as we shift into episode 11, pushes way too hard that QT says to the camera, hey, this is my decision. And she leaves the chat. Like this was like a goat ass move, like top tier goat ass move by QT. Really loved what she did here. Autumn obviously is gone. She visits Jordan. She spills all the beans to Jordan. Um, Newsfeed, Autumn says she's saying goodbye. She says um, she says she's leaving. And um, there's a lot of people following the wolf around, which is definitely interesting to say. Um, QT says she felt bad, but didn't feel close to Autumn. And that's why she had to go. She tells that to the newsfeed. Jordan congratulates QT on winning the circle. Uh, hashtag back, um, uh, you know, and then, you know, uh, and then said Autumn visit him. Uh, like Jordan came in fire again. Again, I, look, there's people that don't like the way Jordan's playing. Strategy, 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 strategy. First things first. Jordan came into the game late. Okay. That's down, down one point. Okay. Two, when you come in this late in the game, and it's not that late, you know what I mean? Now you got him in the second batch. First four episodes, that's still like, it's not a lot of time to really try to make a move. So he's trying to make a move now. There's a power dynamic here. QT, Miles, and Kyle. That's it. That's the, the, the Trace Fuegos. If you don't break that up, you're not going to win this game. Like, if they just bring it down to the final three, one of them's going to win. Adios, amigos. Um, so uh, QT fired back, said uh, Olivia stands. Uh, stands and, well, QT fired back, and then Olivia stood up for QT. Asked who would have sent home. Jordan said QT or Miles. Jordan just stirring the pot. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. Miles called out Jordan saying for him having his back, but didn't say anything to his face. Um, the chat is closed. Love the dynamic here. Love when things get spicy. Love when people get mad. Love when people get angry. Also, I've seen a lot on the message boards, a lot of the conversations about the circle, about Jordan's playing this gameplay. Listen to me. Listen to me. Mark my words. And I'm going to say this whenever I talk about the GOAT next week. When you are playing for a a dollar amount to people talking about the traders they talk about this and that when you are playing a game you're trying to win if you're not in the game to win the game then what are you doing like don't play the game i don't understand we're trying to win a hundred thousand dollars and as jordan points out this is not a hundred thousand dollars split between three people two people four people five people six people no it's one person that wins the cash prize that's it period end of story um, Jordan, Kyle, Miles, Olivia, QT, and Lauren are left on the show. Lauren and Kyle chat. Lauren sees him as an ally, and Kyle uses her to keep him in his place. She is oblivious. Um, can we have the conversation that Lauren might be one of the most oblivious people that we've seen in Circle history? Miles opens up about opens up to Jordan, says he trusted him, and now he's backstabbed. He feels backstabbed. Um, yeah, I mean, Kyle, Miles, QT, Olivia seem to be de destined for our final four, I would say, unless they make a move. Um, Jordan tries to pitch Kyle to get rid of Miles or QT with the idea of telling him that he will be the third fiddle behind those two. Again, great strategy, great execution. Kyle needs to open his ears because, again, if it comes down to QT, Miles, and Kyle, they will get rid of him in the snap of a fingers. Alert. You can send a uh, gift to your best for your to your bestie. Um this is how this unfolded. Lauren didn't get a gift, nor did Miles or Jordan. Kyle sent one to QT. QT got two from Jordan and Olivia. Olivia got one from QT. Olivia got three, one from QT, Miles, and Lauren. Uh, Kyle gives a warm thank you to Olivia, but now for Jordan, he says something nice, which is hilarious. His dilemma, the back and forth, because Jordan was just stirring the pot again. Another great, but I'm telling you, you're going to hear me say this a lot. And then if you're uh, anti-Jordan on this podcast, I'm sorry in advance. I just like a good strategic game player. He's trying to, his, his heart out to win this damn competition. You can't be mad about it. Um, Let's see here. Everyone sees that Olivia's is getting all the, lit, all the gifts. And it's like, hey, Olivia is being well liked right now. Do we have to worry about Olivia finishing? the top 
All right, episode 12, um, our final episode here. Lauren confronts Miles about talking about her behind his back. He calls her out saying it wasn't true. She thinks it was a misunderstanding, but still trusts Jordan. Miles gets mad finding out that Jordan is the one that was throwing him under the bus. Um, Lauren, again, oblivious to the conversation, but also smart, a little bit smart by understanding that Jordan is playing a great game and he is saying the right thing. So this is like one of the first things that she's pointing out that's like, oh my God, like this is the right way. Kyle says sorry to Olivia for not uh, sending her a gift. Of course, she accepts his apology. Jordan pitches QT a possible alliance, and she entertains it. Again, Jordan's like, you know what? Let me throw this back out here. Because anything to stay in the game, you have to try to do. We receive messages from home. Lauren receives one from her sister. Uh, she gets a little bit emotional. Jordan's boyfriend, Joss, sent a message. That was a cute little message. I really like that. QT got a message from her mom and her sister. Uh, Miles got a message from his Aunt Jen. Um, I will say this, these messages kind of got me a little teary eyed. I know we saw an emotion, somewhat of an emotional side of Miles that we haven't really seen before. Um, he does feel like one of those guys that feels like he's like, you know, a badass, can't show his emotions type of thing. But, um, I do think that, you know, he's deep down. I think Miles is a decent guy. Olivia, AKA Brandon's sister reaches out, but a second message from his mom gets him really emotional. Uh, Kyle sends him, uh, Kyle's wife sends a message. Kyle cries um she jokes win or don't come home that's the kind of relationship that you should strive for it was a beautiful moment loved it but he gets a little emotional so he's been away a lot because he's traveling playing basketball he's ready to be home with his wife and be there for her and then bring a little one into their lives and he said this winning this prize would go a long way in helping that love that so much love that the thing about it is it's crazy about kyle is like there's moments where i'm just like oh and then there's other moments i'm like you know what He's a pretty good dude, you know what I mean? So I don't know. Trace Fuego group chat, lighting up the boards, boys and girls. Uh, let's see what we got here. Um, he says, um, Jordan slides into, sorry, Trace Fuego, QT says Jordan's got to go. Kyle agrees. QT says that Jordan talks shit about Kyle, saying he needed to take him out, period. So Kyle's like, oh my God. Um, Jordan slides into Olivia's D Olivia and Lauren's DMs. He says they're safe with him. He asks them to rate him high and return. He will protect them. Lauren asks if it would be enough. She said she is willing to take a chance. Olivia said the same. Now, Olivia is in a rock and a hard place. However, Olivia, this is where we see Olivia, a.k.a. Brandon, really strategically play the game here by saying, you know what? I'm in alliance with Kyle. He's my number one boo who, by proxy, the rest of the Trace Fuegos, QT, and Miles. However, when it comes down to it, I'm probably going to be fourth. I'm fourth fiddle there. So I have to make a move. I have to get rid of one of these three. Like you have to understand at this point of the game, you have to get rid of one of these three if you want a shot and win it at all. If it comes down to the four of them, no dice for you, Olivia. Period. End of story. So we had a hoedown. Everyone busted down. Bust the middle, uh, bust a move in the middle of the hoedown. Of course, now it's rating time. The top rated player will be a super secret influencer and will decide to block the player tonight. Secret influencer. That means secret. You will eliminate somebody and you will not know who eliminated that person. Love that. Alert. It's not Lauren. It's not Miles. It wasn't Jordan. It wasn't QT. It's either Kyle or Olivia, and Olivia wins. I think this could be interesting. Obviously, we get a cliffhanger because what more do we need heading into the finale? We will have five heading into the finale. Final episode. One final episode. I wonder if it's going to be like an hour, hour and a half, maybe. We'll see. Um, but... Olivia needs to pull the trigger and get rid of Miles or QT. Has to. Has to. If Olivia does not pull the trigger and eliminate QT or, or Miles, Olivia just Miles will just sign the little check that they lost. You know what I mean? They might as well just they might as well just cash the check to somebody else. Because after that, let's just say hypothetically he throws out Jordan. Jordan goes, Lauren goes, Olivia goes, Kyle goes. And then it's Miles QT is your final two. That's how I see it go. But, all right. I had fun doing this last week. And if you are still hanging around with me and listening to the podcast, I would love for you to comment on the podcast, whether it's on iTunes, Spotify, um, YouTube, wherever you're watching this. But I did this last week, had a whole lot of fun. So I am going to rate the characters on the show. I'm going to give you who I think... My ratings would be if I'm going, and this is the thing. So I'm going to rate the circle players that are remaining one through six, one who's going to be my influencer, and of course, six being the worst. 
um, and give you the reasons why. A little tidbit, Cassie told us that they they have to tell the TV basically why I'm putting this person in this spot. We don't always see that sort of stuff, but <clears throat> every time they vote, they have to do that. So what would be, here are my circle season six ratings after batch nine through 12. Now this is focused on just what we see in nine through 12. All right, coming in at number six, I have Lauren. I still don't think she's not, she's just not very good at this game. Her consistent struggle to kind of identify the key things has put her here. I almost put her five just based on understanding where Jordan was coming from and understanding that. That was a really first strategic play that we've seen from her. If she can adapt from there, maybe she has a shot to sh kind of shuffle her board all the way towards uh, maybe getting into that final four. Fifth, QT. I had her much higher last week, but I feel like she got a little bit too messy. She overplayed her hand a little bit. I do think that Autumn was a bad choice. I really do. I feel like there's different avenues. Autumn was a nobody in the game. I feel like much better. Lauren should have been eliminated. I really feel like you get rid of Lauren or you look at Olivia. And I understand you have alliances and you're looking at things. But if Kyle and Miles are that strong with you, then you have that, that, that strong connection with already three other people, right? And you have that dynamic and you can even reel in other people to this if you make a power move. Jordan was right. QT was wrong. Number four, Kyle. Uncertainty of his gameplay. Really wish he would focus on trying to win the game and not the alliances. We're getting down to the nitty gritty. Kyle needed to hear Jordan. He didn't listen to Jordan enough and that could potentially cost him the game. Uh, I think if he listens to Jordan, he wins Influencer this week and has the opportunity to make a strong play towards the finale. Third, Olivia. Game has been neutral. Here and there, I've been watching moves from Olivia, a.k.a. Brandon, really making the moves that I've liked. That being said, this really has a chance of playing a great game and or just falling down my radar. If Olivia does not eliminate QT or Miles or even Kyle after this this week, Olivia aka Brandon will move to the bottom of my barrel no matter what happens in the final episode. Miles, although I feel like he got a little too emotional in this batch, I do think um, that he was still strong here. He did lose sight of what he needed to get closer to the finale. I do think he gets a little bit messy, gets a little bit emotional, and that's where you have to take that out in order to be a better game player. That's why I moved him from one set, what, first to second. And of course, if you've been listening to this entire episode, Jordan, sorry, game players of the game are the best of the best, and he did what he needed to do to make things happen. Even if he is eliminated the first five seconds into the next episode, this batch period, Jordan played the best game because of the strategy, because of what he tried to do. He laid it on the line, wasn't afraid to say it in the chat or outside the chat. And that's the reason why Jordan slides into my number one slot, would be my influencer. Of course, that would mean goodbye, Miles. But I would love to hear your comments below. Who are your six through one on the influencer chart for episodes nine through 12 of the Circle Season 6? Thank you guys so much for listening to another episode of the Love and Reality Podcast. I will be back Monday with another interview for Vanderpump Villa. Um, that should be a great interview with Grace. Um, and then, of course, more coverage with the finale coming around the corner. I do have some more exciting interviews for the Circle Season 6 upcoming. Um, thank you guys so much for listening, and I'll talk to you guys next week.